Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at music video techniques using the brand new multicam feature inside of Final Cut Pro uh, 10.0.3. Now the way this tutorial is going to differ slightly is that we don't necessarily have an objective or a goal to achieve by the end of this tutorial. Instead um, we're going to discuss uh, some of the features, um, some of the controls, some of the options we have and some of the workflow me uh, methods to perform fast edits um, using Final Cut Pro um, and like I said to cut a music video uh, in this case so if we just go ahead and take a look at the timeline for a second this is a timeline for a music video that's about three minutes long um, and you can see that we've got essentially what I would say is three main levels we've got our audio track um, now the reason that there's no reason there's a split here that's just me accidentally using the blade tool uh, please ignore that um, the reason I'm not um, I could like knock this off but it's gonna throw everything out of sync um, so ignore that blade tool um, so we've got this audio level um, in our primary storyline um, the reason I've done that was made clear in a previous tutorial so if you haven't seen that check it out, link will be in the description um, but very briefly um, it's so that you can always see your audio track um, and you can line up things, um, video files on beats um, then we've got our main band playing video files um, if we grab all of these files and just press V that's going to hide them all um, and you can see we've got our main band playing using all these different camera angles um, and a lot of this is actually multicam clips now you can see there's some separations here uh, that was where I used the blade tool again uh, this isn't actually necessary um, it's just I was a bit destructive in my workflow trying to get it done quickly um, but you can actually leave this whole sequence as a single multicam clip uh, which is really cool but we're going to discuss that in a second um, if we press V uh, to bring out all these selected files back into play you can see over the top of all our band playing we've got a bit of a narrative, a bit of a storyline, we've got some footage um, we've got some party scene stuff um, all the vintage stuff was actually shot on the iPhone 4 so anyone saying they don't have a ca access to a camera um, the iPod Touch has essentially the same camera in it so you can always use that um, there is literally nothing stopping people from making videos now which I think is, is great really um, and with Final Cut, which compared to other ed editors is quite inexpensive, is really easy to cut stuff together. Um, and the iPhone 4 footage, I was pleased with how well it actually blended. So um, you'll be able to see this video on my website, danallenfilms.com, um, in about a month's time. So, like I said, we've got our audio layer, our band playing layer, and then we've got all of our subsequent layers um, that build up a bit of the narrative over the top and they're all linked um, as b-roll to our main audio track now when we use the multicam what I'm actually going to do is is hide all of this again I actually edited the subsequent storyline bits first and then put this multicam clip in and then it's a matter of feeling the music and cutting where you think is appropriate but there's no need to use the blade tool I did a bit but you actually really don't need to um, if we were to press play and you can see we've got some guitar stuff now if I wasn't actually cutting to another clip here you can see that this drop right here you can um, it's shown because we've got some peaking um, it goes into the yellow, that's um, where a heavier drop bit comes in on that clip you'd want to cut to a different angle so um, for the sake of this tutorial I'm actually going to hide this event browser by simply putting it on my other screen that you can't see so if we press show events on second display that's just going to hide this out of the way for us so we can just focus on our video um, if we go up to this control panel here we can show the angle viewer and now we've got access to all of our angles and all of our videos. Now this is actually the second tab of angles. If we click on show bank one you can see that we've actually got 16 angles here and then we've got um, a, 
a few more, um, about 10 more on the other side. And the audio file's been restricted to this angle and then has been muted. And then we just use the video only switcher to cut between angles as and when we please. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind. You could sync these all up to the original audio track and then use the angle switcher to choose the audio track and then you could have all the video editing in the primary storyline. The only problem with this is that then you have a very limited view of your audio track. Having the actual audio track in your main storyline means you can see the waveform much clearer. Now, I found very quickly that having 16 angles of 1080p video playing all at once is genuinely too much for my um, MacBook Pro to deal with. I've got, I've got one of the latest uh, i7s uh, with 8 gigs of RAM and if we just play back, I mean one of the problems is the fact that the footage is, it's playing back is actually graded um, so that's never going to help um, trying to render effects in real time as well. So we just press play. You can see it's going to lag up quite badly. It's now giving us a spinny wheel and it's really just not very happy about doing this. So this does become quite problematic um, and what you do find you have to do is you get to this point, you want to cut it, you can look a preview of all these different angles. You can obviously still skim and it, it skims all of your different angles as well. Um, I want to cut to say this wide shot here and without having to separate the clip you can see that it still remains one clip shown by this um, secondary storyline bar up here so you can still grab this clip as a whole and um, we've also now got an edit point um, shown by the dotted line this dotted line here um, and it's also movable as I covered in my previous multicam tutorial so we can change the angle um, and also we can uh, sorry we can change where the edit comes in. We can also change the angle again by just putting our playhead on that point and choosing the angle from the angle monitor. And if we were now to hide our angle viewer and play back, you can see very quickly we've actually got quite a nice little workflow going on here. Now obviously it would be nice to be able to play this all back um, in real time and cut between them um, however because I've already graded this project's quite far into it I've had a I've got a cut that's almost essentially been locked down so um, it's going slow because of that anyway and also because there are 16 tracks now you could go into our angle viewer and in the settings we can tell it to display only four angles and then it's not going to struggle quite so much It's still going to want to. There you go. You can see it doesn't struggle anywhere near as much, but now you've got one, uh, you've got seven banks of videos to flick between. Um, so I recommend uh, very quickly just going into the, the mass angle viewer, uh, showing 16, which is the most you can display at any one time. And then having a look. Going on to the second bank, skimming through again, maybe playing back. The more RAM you've got, the faster it will be as well, by the way. And then you can choose your shots from there. Um, let's say at this point, select the shot, and I want to cut to some drums. And then after you make a cut, it's really quickly, remember this shortcut, Shift Command 7. And then that's going to hide the angle viewer. And then I've pressed spacebar on the point I want to cut again. Command Shift 7 brings up our angle editor again. And you can see really quickly we can be flying between this. And with music videos, it is a little bit about feeling the music a little bit. I am quite musical illiterate. Um, my aspirations to be in a band. I've never been in a band, by the way. Um, it looks like fun, though. I want to cut back to this master angle a bit with a bit of movement. Um, command shift 7 to hide that up again, and then we get a nice... Well, we would get a nice. We're actually not seeing anything at the moment. I think Final Cut's having a moment to itself. 
That's one of these shots. Um, you know, if your viewer disappears, what I did to solve this is I've gone onto my second monitor, I've done a little bit of skimming on some of my footage on the events, and that generally re reloads the uh, viewer, if your viewer ever disappears. Um, then we can play back. And then, this is a nice solo point, so you want to cut Command Shift 7, it's going to bring up our angle viewer. This is the close up of the guitar. And come on, shift 7 to hide that so we get a nice fluid playback. So one of the things to bear in mind obviously when you're shooting is knowing that you've got enough coverage to be able to switch to essentially any angle you want and with a bit of freedom. I mean the way I've gone about shooting it is making sure we've literally covered everything so I can cut to anything I want at any point but also throw in some movement shots so stuff like dollying from left to right um, so that you've got some quite cinematic motions at specific points at the same time as having the option of cutting to anything, so stuff like the drum kit, um, stuff like close-ups or wides or mids of any of the people, um, as well as you want three, four, and some cinematic movement motions of the singer as well, because um, the front man obviously needs to be quite highlighted in, in the music video. Um, so you can see it's really easy to go through and make cuts, you there's no blade tool, there's no nothing, you just put your playhead when you want to cut and then you can just cut to anything, we're going to cut to um, at this point, where, so I have no idea what it is, I'm just choosing it by random um, which is not what you want to do but I'm just doing it for the sake of the tutorial um, I want to cut to the drummer actually no, let's cut to this wide shot, this looks like a nice fluid wide shot to cut to Oh, I didn't press Command Shift 7. That's going to confuse him. That shot there looks quite nice. Um, so maybe when we get to here, we can cut to this shot. And then Command Shift 7. Um, now you can see that I was actually a bit out with one of the um, beats here. Um, the beat happens around here, whereas the cut is here. So if we just put our cursor over this point, we can grab that and move that over. And remember, this is all done within the select tool, so we've got no need to ever change the tool when we're doing that. And you can see really quickly how much freedom this is. Um, now. Well, one of the things I was also pleased about, um, what I'm going to do is show the viewer on the second display um, so that we can see all, our, all, of, all of our events. Basically what I did, I went through any um, angle that worked quite well, so this shot, this shot, all these shots um, that play back quite nicely. I favorited them um, by pressing F or pressing this green star here. And that let me know that them shots were the shots that I w needed to sync up. And literally, it was a matter of I selected them all, I keyworded them, um, band for sync is what I keyworded them shots as, and then a right click, new multicam clip. Now, it took about 20 um, to 30 minutes um, because there's about 26 angles, but I didn't have to retime anything um, and I mean that. Now we, if I just play back one of the clips to let you know the sort of audio quality so it's really low, it's really pixely, uh, we didn't have any on well we had some microphones there but we weren't using them literally this is the um, shot with the Canon 550D um, we just let it pick up the the sound of everything going on and it goes all pixely because the volume is too loud um, 
and you get a lot of distortion, but it still managed to distinguish distinguish the uh, song. You can sat, you can hear it's very distorted, but all of them are roughly the same. And Final Cut actually had no problem with syncing them all, and we didn't have to trim any of the starts. You can hear there's a few, um, none of the songs start at the same time. You're rolling, Josh, you're rolling. Make sure you get that guitar for the opening bit. Okay, how are you ready? Rolling, rolling, Everyone? You can hear there's a massive buffer zone here before the song actually starts playing. Yet, Final Cut dealt with a similar buffer zone for all of them. All the buffer zones were different, me giving different directions, um, all kinds of crazy stuff, but it just ignored that and went for the song. Um, and if we just find the multicam clip for you a second. Um, I think this is it. If we double click on this. You can see this is the um, multicam viewer. Now, one of the main things to bear in mind that you can do here is you can, um, let's say, um, you knew that some of the angles you weren't going to use as much, um, so you might want to put them in a different row. If we just adjust the height of the, um, the clips there, and the other thing you you want to do is if you um, get rid of the waveform by choosing this, then you just get a nice preview of the visuals. You can grab each angle by this. Um, bar here uh, where it goes all slightly gritty and you can rearrange them which makes um, all the different angles really accessible and the other thing is let's say we then had another angle that we wanted to add to it um, like this angle here let's say we forgot this angle um, you can click on this arrow here add angle grab this angle put it into our new untitled angle you can put it anywhere in there and then sync um, sync angle to monitor angle using audio so basically it's going to sync this clip to this clip which in turn effectively should sync it to all the others um, so it's really easy to add an additional angle uh, which is really cool so that essentially is it um, if you have any questions, I can go over them again. I just wanted to discuss some uh, really cool workflow features um, that you might want to implement into the music video uh, when you're making music videos with Final Cut Pro 10. And I found that it's been a dream to work with, um, being able to really quickly see all of my angles, um, cut between any of them, but then editing the narrative, I guess, as you would do any other music video or any other film, but keeping it in time with the music um, and whatnot. And the actual final compositing I actually did in Final Cut. Um, these are the, if I reveal these clips, you can see they, there's a clip from Husky on the TV. That was all done in Final Cut. And there, there's this bit here where the lead singer sees his band playing. Uh, this is quite a cool transition. Um, but if you want to hear more of the music, make sure you go and check out Forever After. Um, Facebook.com forward slash Forever After, I think, but don't quote me on that. Just check the description and there'll be a link on that. I realised I've said um quite a few times, I apologise. I, I, I have these tutorials every now and then where I'm thinking a lot. And generally I don't say um when I think, um, but I want to keep you guys entertained. I don't want to have long periods of silence whilst I commiserate. Um, so hopefully this was useful uh, remember to subscribe recommend me to some friends and request your tutorials in the description i do read them uh, motion tutorials are coming soon i've got a brand new final cut training series that i can't wait to talk about and lots more